An ROV helps because we can very quickly, rapidly and safely get eyes on a particular object. We find the use of an ROV much, much more effective and efficient and safer uh, to be able to accomplish those underwater inspections. We can do more with less time when using an ROV. The Maritime at Deep Checker really encompasses every application of, of in-water inspection within ports, port authorities, but also the commercial shipping and leisure vessels. It also encompasses offshore, so where we're looking at wellhead and riser inspections, as well as FPSOs, ballast tanks. Deep Checker is a manufacturer of remotely operated vehicles for underwater inspection. We call these ROVs and we really grew our expertise in manufacturing the light, portable and rapid to deploy solutions. So this can be deployed by a single operator to get a rapid investigation underwater, as well as routine inspections that benefit from a highly portable solution. You don't have to be somebody that uses remote controls or is gaming fanatic ever done that. Um, my wife, for example, was not into any of that and she took to the controller instantly. She's a better flyer than I am, and I used to video game. So it was just natural for her for the lateral planes, the movement, um, the adjustable arm, and be able to grab. So we have the capability to integrate multi-beam imaging sonars, stereo cameras for photogrammetric 3D modeling, as well as UT and CP probes that can be used to gather physical data. These are an incredibly valuable tool that can be configured exactly to the application. Well, the capabilities of the platform are, are pretty extensive. At their core, it really is just equipment that is going to improve safety underwater and reduce the time that's taken to do inspections. The best part of my job is the opportunity to go out and spend time with our customers, see how they're using them in the real world, get feedback, but also the opportunity to share some of their stories with you. So vessels and underwater infrastructure need frequent and routine inspections to maintain the safety of that asset. The goal of these inspections is to check for damage, structural integrity, corrosion and whether there are any cracks or leaks, but also things like biofouling. How much biofouling is there that's going to reduce the ship efficiency, but also the type of fouling, which is especially important when trying to dock in international ports. In the commercial shipping and large vessel world, it's really important to undertake these inspections for more than just fuel efficiency. Often regulatory bodies will require reports on the status of the hulls prior to docking in, in international ports. And it's important to make sure that this is a thorough inspection. This often includes the propeller, the rudder stock, the anchor and anchor chain, as well as sea chest and intake structures. Within the vessel, especially in the offshore world, it's important to take care and make sure that the ballast tanks are also inspected. Typically, this is a niche that the ROV is well equipped for due to the, the compact size and ability to get into confined spaces where typically people shouldn't go. So the status of the ship hull is really important to the ship owners and especially in light of ship efficiency. But hull inspections go beyond this, especially for port authorities where detecting invasive species and biofouling is of high importance for compliance with international standards, but also detecting parasitic devices that may have been added to structures on this ship hull. So traditionally, part of ship hull maintenance and inspection has been in part dry docking, which unfortunately with its high associated costs is amplified by the operational time that is lost by having that ship out of the water. So the other method of in-water survey or inspection is typically the use of divers. Divers often face unfavorable conditions, whether that's a, a high current environment or the poor visibility we're all familiar with within ports. In the past where uh, we would send a diver in in zero visibility to do inspections and he would essentially just be doing everything by feel. This means that not only is it a challenging inspection for a diver to complete, but this is also associated with high risks. 
Extensive risk assessments need to be conducted before putting a person in the water, as well as the requirement to make sure that the vessel is fully shut down. Yeah, without an ROV, the uh, the challenge is, is that it's much more risky, much more complex. It requires a, you know, often a commercial dive team uh, to be able to inspect uh, and formally inspect that infrastructure. In the past, when we had to do a simple inspection, uh, we had to send a three-man dive team with surface supply, with helmets, communications, video equipment. Uh, before you know it, it's a completely loaded truck and trailer with all the gear just to go do a simple 20-minute inspection. The nice thing with uh, the Deep Tracker uh, ROVs is uh, we're able, instead of sending a three-man dive team, we're able just to send a one-person uh, ROV operator out to site and they're able to accomplish the exact same thing but with even faster, efficient, safer, uh, just everything. It's been a complete game changer. So it's reduced the cost for our clients dramatically. Non-routine inspections are often needed when emergency situations arise. Traditionally, you're at the mercy of scheduling of dive teams or crews that are available in that moment. But how you're able to respond in the immediate minutes and hours will often determine the impact of that emergency. So in the past, we would need at least like two to three days heads up notice before we can deploy a dive team. But now having the deep tracker ROV is we get a call and 10 minutes later, the operator is on his way to sites. With the ability to rapidly investigate, you're able to minimize the downstream effects, not only the impact on the infrastructure, but also for the health and safety of the crews and people involved. We have a range of vehicles in different sizes and configurations which are adaptable to specific applications within the maritime world, all with the end goal of gathering more higher quality data. Deep checker ROVs are what we call observation and inspection class ROVs. What this really means is they're a highly portable rugged solution, so deployed out of two Pelican cases and able to be deployed and operated by one person. In maritime and offshore applications, I often find that it's the commercial dive teams and service providers that are using ROVs as a tool. This is a tool for safety, so reaching hard to reach areas, confined spaces. It's also a tool that can be used to observe the divers whilst they're working or doing pre-dive safety checks. And with the ROV, we were able to go down clamp right on to the top of the screen. So when the diver had to go down and do the work, you weren't just dropping down into the abyss, hoping you were gonna hit the bottom. You had something to hold on to and be like, yep, at the bottom of this is where I'm working. I'm on site, there's no hazards down there. Past 10 years, we've had zero incidents, zero accidents, zero near misses. And it's because we have uh, a deep tracker ROV with us on every diving operation that we do. It's just an extremely valuable tool to make sure to either eliminate or really cut down the hazards for somebody potentially getting hurt or killed. Beyond this, it's also increasing the frequency in which service providers are able to do the inspections, staying under for longer, gathering more data. So really these are tools that helps you get into the water and observing what's happening in a matter of minutes. This overcomes some of the traditional challenges we see with dry docking and divers. From experience, it's also the commercial divers that make the best pilots since they know what they're looking for. The, the setup time, uh, the, the requirements to, to, to power, to energize, to deploy an ROV uh, definitely provides uh, both uh, you know, sort of a crew savings uh, as, well as, a, as well as a time savings. If you're a diver, he's still putting his dry suit on, he's rigging up his BCD, he's 20 minutes, 15 minutes, even if he's a trained, well-oiled machine, 10 to 11 minutes, he's in the water, diving down. I've already done it. In the past, we might only be able to do one, maybe two reservoirs a day, where utilizing the deep tractor ROV, we're able to do four, five, six reservoirs in a day. It saves us time, and that ultimately saves clients money and keeps us working. Here at Deep Trekker, we designed our ROVs with the principle of making in-water inspections safer, quicker, and more reliable. So Deep Trekker vehicles all take slightly different forms based on the application and what you're trying to achieve. One thing that does unite all of the vehicles is the software platform that they run on. At Deep Trekker, we call this software bridge. Bridge can be run on our handheld controller, on a control console, 
or even remotely through a web application. You can use this software to have multiple displays, access the ROV remotely, add notes. The underwater world can be unforgiving, and so we've designed our ROVs with materials that are tolerant to varying conditions. This includes magnetically coupled drives for low maintenance thrusters, stainless steel, anodized aluminum, and carbon fiber bodies that can withstand impact. These ROVs have been tested in some of the harshest conditions. The Deep Tracker ROVs are incredible machines. They're literally indestructible. Uh, they just go, 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 go. They take a beating. The technology itself is, there's no one out there that's doing the same thing that Deep Tracker is doing right now. At Deep Trekker, we have a range of four different underwater ROVs. We have the DTG3, the Photon, the Pivot, and the Revolution. The DTG3 is actually our most compact and portable unit. It's designed to get into hard to reach spots, and so typically used in maritime for sea chest and tank inspection. This unit wasn't necessarily designed to support lots of additional tooling and sensors. So beyond visual inspection, we'd look at one of our larger ROVs, like the Revolution. This is the Revolution ROV. It's actually our largest platform. You'll notice it's flat hydrodynamic design, so this makes it best suited for open water applications, where the ROV might have to deal with a bit of current. Where it's useful to have the ROV flat and stable in current, we have a rotating camera head. This is where all the tooling integrates, meaning that the ROV is useful for adding additional sensors and tools to. The Photon is another super lightweight and portable ROV. However, it has the same six thruster configuration as the larger Pivot and Revolution. This means it's highly maneuverable. However, it's still designed for the lower current confined spaces. The Pivot is a balance of size and power. It's a step up from the Photon ROV in terms of the tooling it can support and additional sensors. However, different to the Revolution ROV, you'll note that the camera and tooling platform are separated. Typically, I find this is a pilot preference. As larger platforms, the Pivot and Revolution have additional capabilities in terms of autonomous mission planning, as well as ROV underwater positioning. Each Deep Trekker ROV is equipped with an ultra high definition 4K camera. What changes across the platforms is the field of view or degrees of rotation. On the DTG3, you get a full 270 degrees of rotation, as well as on the Photon ROV. You'll notice on the smaller ROVs, that's an internal camera. On the larger Pivot and Revolution, these are external. You have 220 on the Pivot and a full 260 on the Revolution. This is key for getting into hard to reach spots. So one of the most common integrations with our vehicles is the Oculus series of multi-beam imaging sonars. You'll notice that integrated into the camera head on the Revolution, so it has the same 260 degrees of rotation, as well as on the tilt platform on the Pivot, so that has a 97 degree rotation. That means that you can change the angle of the sonar as you do the mission, changing the field of view to build a different image. On the Photon and on the DTG3, these are statically mounted. Of course, you can pitch the DTG3 to change that angle, and on the Photon, you're limited somewhat to changing the altitude of the ROV. With the range of Oculus sonars, we have a few different options, depending on what is required from the inspection. If you need a long-range, low-frequency sonar, the C550 is a great option. If you need low-range, high-frequency, for example, a inspection in black water, then the M3000 is most commonly chosen. There's a few different options for powering your Deep Trekker system. As standard, they're battery operated systems. On the DTG3, you can get up to eight hours of battery life. On the Photon, one to two hours, the Pivot, two to three, and the Revolution, four to six. This is a range as it typically changes based on the application or the conditions that the ROV is working in. If you need continuous operations, we have the direct power and shore power option. This is a tether that runs both communications and power to the ROV. So for the smaller DTG3 and Photon, our depth rated to 120 meters, that's 393 feet. The larger ROVs are able to go to 305 meters, that's 1,000 feet. That's supported by the tether reel. It's a copper twisted pair communications tether, and that goes up to 300 meters. So for the smaller ROVs, the tether is 120 meters, that's around 393 feet. And for the larger ROVs, that's a 300 meter tether around 1,000 feet. It's a copper twisted pair tether as standard with fiber optic options if needed. 
When considering which ROV might be the best tool for the job, I would start with how deep do I need to go? If it's beyond 120 meters, you'll need to look at the pivot or the revolution. Beyond that, how much current is there in the environment? Again, a higher current will need a larger, more stable platform. Typically, if there's any current, the revolution's flat profile is best suited. Does the 4K camera give me enough of a field of view to see my target or navigate to it? Often in highly turbid or murky water, you might ask, can I benefit from a multi-beam imaging sonar? This sonar will not only help build a picture of directly in front of the ROV at a low range, but also see a field much further beyond the field of view of the camera and help you navigate towards the target. The standard ultra high definition 4K camera on all of the ROVs will enable you to capture high definition video and stills of the inspection. You could also use this camera to capture data using our auto snapshot feature to put into a software to build a 3D model in post. We also do have some additional camera options, such as the Voya stereo camera that can be used to also to build 3D models. The integration of the Voyas camera system uh, into, into the ROV uh, allows for a seamless engagement, seamless use of that, uh, of that ROV technology while making sure you can capture the, the right images uh, for what we need and the right images in the right way to build uh, quality models. Ultrasonic thickness UT gauges and cathodic potential CP probes are common integrations for the Revolution and Pivot ROV. These can be used to measure corrosion and steel thickness to assess the integrity of a structure. The grabber arm is typically most useful and most commonly used for object retrieval, whether this is salvage or recovering something off the bottom. The grabber has a 20 pound grip strength and depending on the platform, the pivot has a 97 degree tilt and 260 degrees within the rotation of the camera head on the revolution. We're able to use the ROV to uh, salvage any, anything that's essentially on bottom instead of using divers. It's all well and good gathering lots of data when underwater, but unless you're able to tie that to a position, it's very hard to analyze this data. GPS doesn't work underwater, so there are a few different systems, depending on your environment, that you can use for underwater positioning. Typically, a USBL, an ultra short baseline positioning system, is an acoustic system that allows you to determine where the ROV is relative to a topside position. Uh, the USBL giving us the ability to give clients uh, accurate mapping of what actually is happening underwater has been an, a great new upgrade for the pivot. However, in some maritime applications where you have large metal structures or noise from live boating, we find that the USBL ping can be interrupted. An alternative is dead reckoning. This is using an upgraded IMU in the sensor pool of the ROV and using sensor fusion with a combination of data, including the magnometer, accelerometer, and gyroscope. Whilst inputting the ROV's start position, the ROV is able to determine where it has moved over time. Mission Planner is a feature within our software that allows you to use autonomous features on the ROV. This means that you can set a waypoint, depth, or speed for the ROV to travel at. This is particularly useful in removing the burden off the pilot, especially if you have a known grid or area to cover with the ROV. BridgeBox allows you to connect to the ROV over the Bridge web application and control the ROV fully remotely over a VPN or LAN network. This also enables a full control console setup as well as a multi-screen display to have both your video, sonar and all data through the inspection. DeepTracker is more than just an ROV manufacturer. We're going to be here to support you through the service and training of your vehicle. We work with you to find out exactly what is going to be the right tool for the job, for you and your project. Uh, you feel like you're a part of a family. There's always someone there that can help you. Uh, There's just a phone call away. We've been using DeepTracker since we first heard of them. We love the fact that it's a Canadian founded company and that you can pick up the phone, call them, get answers immediately. The service, like it doesn't matter what you buy, whether it's Canadian made, US made, it doesn't matter. It's how are they gonna take care of you at the end. You know, DeepTracker has been, been great for our business and great to support it and we're, and we're happy to continue working with, with DeepTracker on, on projects.